Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angels messenger and the accepted meaning of uh, destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. So um, in a moment, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful guest, Michelle Budd. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching this show live or at a later date. As it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. And if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Tension Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic reiki, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Michelle Budd, about her journey and how she works alongside horses to help women and children love their life. Now, Michelle is the founder of Kent Equine Facilitated Learning and has a passion for helping others overcome challenges Realise that there is more to life. Know that they are not alone and that you can love your life. Now, Misha was a single mum who faced her own challenges, so she understands young mums and their challenges. Misha has been teaching for many years, and when she realised that school didn't suit her anymore, took the decision to start her business, which incorporates the assistance of the horses to work with those who are facing challenges in their lives, whether children or adults especially young mums who may have lost their self-esteem and that there are opportunities for them to take charge of their destiny. Now, with testimonials such as, I've had the pleasure of working alongside Michelle and the herd for many years. During this time, I've encountered some difficult personal losses and tragedies. Michelle has given me the support and encouragement to get through difficult times. Her work with the herd has been a tower of strength to me, and I'm so honoured to have had the support from both Michelle and the horses. Her understanding of people's personal needs is outstanding. Thank you, Michelle and Equine Facilitate Learning. And another testimonial, nothing flusters you so. I don't feel stupid telling you things. You're positive about things all the time. You make me seem and feel normal and turn my dramas into an opportunity for great things. You always tell me the positives about me too, which makes me start believing them. It's so refreshing to meet a strong woman who doesn't act threatened by me. There seems to be no act with you. You are happy with yourself and happy to help others. You're amazing. So without further delay, hello, Michelle, and how are you? Welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. It's nice to listen to that was a good introduction. <laughs> yes, it's always nice. We always forget about um, uh, about what other people say about us. And, you know, sometimes it's nice just to be reminded of that. Yeah, yeah. No, the the reason why I sort of put that out there today was because um, I think one of the um, questions that we were saying that could come up was um, how I felt I empowered women. Mm. And so I thought about it for a while and I just thought about yeah, the women who empower me. Um, and then I thought, I wonder if they even know that they empower me. I wonder if they even are, are aware that they empower me. And then I thought, you know, what, I'm just going to ask some of the people that I connect with um, the question, you know, do you feel like, you know, in our connections, you become empowered in some way because of me so they were the response some of the responses that i got today and actually as i've been sitting here i'm seeing more responses sort of flashing up on my, on my yeah. mess messenger so it's been nice to read as we've been chatting but um just to see them coming up but it was they're difficult to read they're difficult to 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 hear um and uh yeah no it's 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 nice to see nice to nice to read yeah. but but yeah Okay, so before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Michelle and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel and then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. 
um, and Carla's said hello. So Misha, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how you work alongside horses to help women and children love their life? Oh, we, lo we, lo we lost you for a second there, but you're back again. I think it's the wi maybe the Wi-Fi is cutting in and out. Uh, okay, so tell us, tell us about yourself. Uh, so, um, in terms of the right now or the the before stuff. So tell us, tell us your journey. How did you start on this journey? Um, so I suppose if I go back to, um, I left school uh, at the age of eighteen. Um, and most of my friends um, at that age were choosing their pathways and careers into uni, um, but I had uh, a child. Um, as I'd left school, so I sort of in my A level year, sort of uh, was uh, pregnant with with my first daughter Harley. And when I left school, uh, my friends went off to uni, and I, uh, at the age of sort of nineteen, was a mum. Um, and by the time I was twenty one, I was a mum of two young girls, and then took myself to uni um, and trained to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my decision you know to be a teacher really because it fitted in with being a mum so you know knowing that I would have six weeks holiday off where if I was yeah. a working mum I would need to kind of find childcare for, for my children so that was really you know I didn't really say that in the job interviews you know why 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 do you want to be a teacher <laughs> <laughs> because it fits in with my you know with, with the most important job you know or thing that I am which is a mum or which I felt like at the time was the most important thing for me so yeah so I, I was teaching and I taught for um a long time so sort of did university with two children then did my teacher training um and during uh you know when I turned 30 I had my son Patrick um and I was a PE teacher so I had you know my three children and um was teaching um and a few years into my teaching career, I became then a, a school sports coordinator where I worked and supported other schools to ensure that, uh, I suppose, PE was being delivered to a certain level of, you know, good, you know, good or outstanding. So that was kind of a role that I did. So I was always working with um, adults and young people in like a, in a teaching role. Um, I set up some a centre to deliver fitness qualifications um, and that was in Epping so that was at uh, Further Education College, Epping Forest College so I set that up and I think about two years into that job um, work became hard um, there was a particular um, feeling within the team where I worked where you know there was a level of um, imbalance in the team and I sought to work um, and, and you know work in a different field and an opportunity came up for me to work abroad so I picked up my life and, and went sort of across the road across the world across the road across the world to the UAE and uh, worked in Abu Dhabi for, for wow. a few years and headed up yeah headed up a, uh, a newly um, established sports department and a centre for health and wellness for young people as um, I think at that time the young people in Abu Dhabi had some of the highest mor mor you know, morbid obesity rates um, and so it was sort of my role to facilitate um, health and wellbeing for young people and to teach families how to um, you know, install good habits in, in their young people. So kind of, you know, a bit like the change for life stuff, which we do in the yeah. UK. So yeah, it was good. It was a it was a good it was a good time. So and then coming back to England, I came back to England because I wanted a more sort of solid education and foundation for my son. Um so he was going into secondary school at that point. And um he wanted to, uh, he, he loved Abu Dhabi, but we, we said that we'd give it a couple of years there. And when I spoke to him about it after sort of, it was coming up to sort of two years, and I said, what do you want to do, Pat? And he said he, you know, wanted to take up his sort of secondary school position back in England um, and sort of 
reconnect with his friends from his junior school, which he did um, in his secondary school. And yeah, I came back and continued to teach in England. So that was, uh, yeah. And there had been quite a lot of changes in the school systems. I think, you know, um, to me, it felt like when I first started teaching, there was um, more room to be creative in your teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, it seemed like the creativity for teachers, it felt to me like creativity for teachers and working with young people as individuals had been um, removed from teachers. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it was it, it was quite difficult for me to be able to work with young people, for example, that weren't allowed to leave the classroom to go to use the bathroom. Oh. Um, yeah, you know, and, and for me to actually be told off for letting a child go to use the bathroom. You know? <laughs> so and and they were there were things that just sort of amalgamated to the point where I thought, well actually, um I've I'd, I'd I'd at this point I'd done my leap training, so I was qualified to deliver equine learning. And I just thought actually this is this is the um this is the sign that I need to, you know, these things where that are really physically making me feel um uneasy and uncomfortable. I kind of need to uh to go out and sort of make another um, life really and sort of bring another you know have another way of being able to pay for my family and what we do and sort of bring a little bit more creativity back into my sort of teaching life so mm -hmm. and I don't think you could get more creative than teaching no. young people with a herd of eight horses so yeah, yeah exactly we'll, we'll get on to the horses in a minute um yeah. well how what made you get into um um, physical education um, t teaching yeah. teaching physicals you know yeah, to... so I suppose when you because I remember like one of the questions was about women that empowered me mm. my um, one of the key women in my life was my secondary school teacher uh, my sorry so my primary school teacher she was also my netball coach um, and I had an older sister as well who was a uh, a really physically, you know, fit and um, sporty gal. And I was three years younger, so she was in the netball team. So I wanted to be in the netball team. And I remember I used to wait after school and watch my sister play netball. And this teacher at the time, who was my sister's netball coach and just a teacher in the school, said to me, do you want to play? You know, next time bring your trainers and play. And these girls, you know, when you're seven years old, these girls were 11. Yeah. They were so much more physically able than me, but she used to let me go on and play. And I just became good at it. And I remember when I got to, uh, you know, maybe three or four months into playing, she started putting me in the team with with my sister's team so that I could go and play, you know, against other schools. So I knew I had this real sort of, you know, I, I was good at sport and I'd always played sport and played netball to a high standard, really. And um, so, yeah, sport and physical activity to me, I mean, it was my favourite subject at school. Um, and when I went into secondary school, I went to start girls grammar school and I just loved sport and everything about sport. And, um, yeah, so it was a natural, really, progression for me to, to sort of go on to be a PE teacher, being that, I, you know, sport was really one of my most you know, mm. favourite things. So, yeah. yeah. So how did you kind of like, because obviously, um, you know, you're a young mum. So how did you... Um, you know, did, when when you found out you're pregnant, did you think, oh my God, you know, I what am I going to do with my life now? You know, how can I no, go and do what no, I wanted to do? Not at all. No, I just again another inspiring woman in my life is my mum. So I remember um, sort of speaking to my mum about you know being pregnant and and um, you know not wanting to not be a mum. You know, I think by that, you know, my hormones were just wanting to to to, to have the mum and you know to have that mm. mum love and to to have the baby. And my mum just she just supported me and um, you know made me feel like that that it was it would be okay. It was going to be difficult. It was going to be really hard. And you know, she said that the, you know the person who was the, the the father of the baby would probably not be there in the long run. We're naturally he is still you know a father to my my two eldest daughters um and so he he has been there in the long run but you know the road wasn't the road was as rocky as what she predicted it would be 
Um, and yeah, I mean, just I had a lot of support from from my mum really. So, so which I was really lucky. Um, but yeah, so that was a uh, that was how it all happened. So to be able to go to university and have you know two young children that you know had to go to their playgroup and their you know their childcare and their crashes and all the rest of it was quite. Um, you know, quite challenging, but we did it. It was, you know, and it was a family effort. You know, it was my granddad would would be there and have have the children, and my mum would make sure that she could sort of support me with what I was doing, and 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 it, that's how it was. That's what yeah. we did. Yeah, yeah. Which, which which is which is really good because um, because obviously I'm, and I've, I've known women that um, didn't have all that support um, in, so, the back, yeah. in the background. Yeah, no, me too. I mean, I, you know, very, very lucky. And and uh, for me, then, you know, being a young mum, I did, um, with the local health authority, I went into schools um, and it was to, <laughs> it really didn't work. It wasn't, it didn't really work how it was supposed to work. It was to talk to young girls about not falling pregnant early um, because when you have, a baby your life is now your baby's life and yeah. you know the things that you wanted to do and the things that you could do have now um are now not there anymore and for a young person that can be really really challenging but my daughter was so beautiful <laughs> that I would take her into the classroom with me and I just looked like a baby holding a baby really I looked like a young child with a baby because I did you know I didn't sort of did you know didn't look all grown up really when I yeah. Uh, 19 and 20 I think I was 20 when I was doing this and these girls were just oh you know and I was like oh, yeah this is working because I wanted people to know that actually you know having having a baby is not it isn't the be all and end all and it was for me it was more about um having a family unit I suppose around me and a family that I could could say was mine but it was it was it was you know in hindsight I mean if I could have my children five years later it would I would have had been able to provide more for them um but actually you know what do the children need they need to be loved and supported and cared for and and you know that's that's what they got so you know i think you know i'm i'm, I'm happy with the way my life was i've been yeah. but for my own daughters who are now 27 and 24 um i think if at, at the age of you know 18 they'd have come home and said to me that they, you know, were going and it going down the route that I went down. I, I would have felt, you know, a, a sense of of loss for them because knowing how difficult it was to bring them up and to, to juggle everything, and and I, and and for me to actually then say to them that I can do as much for them as what my mum did for me when you know what she did for me was phenomenal, and I don't know whether I could have given that much and given as much as what my mum gave me, but you know, yeah. you know. Who, 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 knows? Knows? who knows? So we go from so you go and work in in schools and um, other other places and there and teaching physical education, personal trainer, um, uh, teaching um, and assessing other people to become personal trainers. How do you suddenly go from that into working with horses? That's so kind of like a, that's kind of like a bit of a big leap. It is a, it's a huge leap, actually, and that leap was the company I was trained by as well. A leap, so that's that's a good good link. But um, so I've always had horses. So again, I've been been really really lucky to have this really supportive family. So my dad was the um, the kind of key, the gateway to me um, connecting with horses and being able to um, have horses in my life. So, so my mum and dad weren't together. So my mum and dad split up when I was about three, but my dad was a regular dad who was always in contact with me always standing at the side in the netball court when I was playing netball at school and you know helping the team get from A to B to C so with the, with the team when when you know parents could turn up and throw kids yeah. in their cars um, and that that was you know when my dad was and because uh, he was a fireman so he had shift work so we had this real regular pattern of when we were going to connect and I knew um, probably more than my friends with their fathers that lived at home when I would see my dad and when I did see my dad we had this really good um, safe quality time together um, so yeah so my dad would 
he knew I loved horses because when I saw horses from a really young age, I would scream, you know, like horses, <laughs> totally scream. And I remember him like <sighs> with with his finger in his ear because yeah. I'd be in the back of the car sort of generally, but I could just, I think I just sense horses around and I just literally would scream at the top of my voice like if I saw horses in the distance. And um, he was a firefighter, so he would... If he was out on a on a shout, which you know, like going to a fire, if he saw horses in a field, he would take me and show me these horses and say, you know, look at these horses and whatnot. And then I started having, you know, traditional sort of type of riding lessons. And then I think we loaned a pony so that I could sort of ride sort of at my leisure. And and then that was it. We just went from that to then horse ownership and yeah. So so horses were all around. So that was that was really my dad's you know, sort of influence and, you know, sort of really pushed for that for me to have that in my life. So, yeah, yeah. I was lucky. You were. So, um, as I said earlier, we said Carla said hello. Hello, Carla. Um, so, yeah, Carla said hello. Say hello to Carla. Um, and we had if, a hello from the States as well. Did we you have. That? Yeah, we've had Ibrahim, who's hello from Bethlehem, Palestine. And, yeah, we have Jerry Posiak, possibly. Yeah. Hello from, yeah. from, from the States. Yeah, don't forget, please do say hello. Let us know that you're here watching watching us. And if you do have any comments or questions, you know, please do type them in um, and we'll try and answer them live or at, at a later day. So you've always always had horses. So so now we go back to what made you decide to bring the horses into your work or start working with horses to help people? Um, so, so one of, so actually one of the, um, one of the comments that you read out earlier about kind of the longevity of knowing me and being around my horses. And so that was a, that's a really, really lovely close friend of mine. Um, yes. Yeah. So her, her sister was, um, diagnosed with cancer and died quite quickly after the diagnosis. I mean, it was a really short space of time. And we played netball together. So there's the link, like we played netball together. And um, she's a real strong lady. So I was so lucky to play on the same team as her because previously to playing on the same team as her, she played on a different team and she used to mark me. <laughs> and when you just look at someone, you think, oh, God, you know, yes. she's that beer, but I'm, I'm not playing that position. But she used to always end up, my, anyway, we became really good friends. We ended up playing on the same netball team. And uh, she told me about, you know, what was going on for her with her situation with her sister. And it was awful. And I had nothing. I had nothing. I couldn't. But I said, look, you know what? Come with me. And spend some time with me at the horses because when I'm there with my horses, I there's nothing else. There's nothing else. It's just me and the horses. It's a very present, I suppose. You know, I don't think the mm. you know, um, sort of being present was was bounded about at that time. I said it's very um, you're very insulated there, and you can just forget stuff and just you know come back to it, and it gives gives your brain a rest. So she came for the day, and she was like can I come back tomorrow? I was like, yeah. And she came back tomorrow and she was like, can I come back tomorrow? I said, no, don't ask. Just, just turn up, just come. If I'm not here, just come, you know, the horses are, and that's, that was that. And, you know, I was just on the phone to her today and we're saying, well, do you know what? I've got a client tomorrow at 10. So if you get there at eight, then we can just, you know, do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just, it was a really nice thing. And, um, I know, I know it was therapeutic for her and it was also a relief for me to be able to say nothing and just be there and just know that she was getting like this soulful stuff going on and um, which words, you know, what, what can you say? You can't say yeah. words, you can't provide, you can't gift, you can't. Um, make up for but it was just this other it's a really unique thing I think when you connect with horses like that and she and she found that for herself you know and it was just um, something that I could 
could say, you know, could offer, you know, I can offer you this, you know. So, and then once that happened, once that happened, it just, it just sort of turned a light bulb on for me. And I knew that there were places where you could go and you could have equine therapy and there were actual official places. And um, after, after that, I then had quite a tragedy happen in my close circle um, and I sought out equine therapy for my own um, healing I suppose and you know growth and mending and uh, and I'd had other therapy I'd sort of had sort of uh, room based therapy and it didn't really sort of didn't do the trick really for me and so I went and sort of went quite traveled quite far to have have this this therapy and it helped me a lot um and then I went away and came back from Abu Dhabi and um and then just looked you know looked looked to to um to train really to see what I could do so do I need to become a psychotherapist do I need to you know go and study at university again what is it that I needed to do and I um, came across a course which was you know if you work with people if you've done these types of jobs and teaching was one of them if you have you know skills with horses if you had you know then you can come and you can train with us and um, you know it's, the company's called Leap and um, and everything looked like you know it was kind of the answer to what I wanted and then I sort of saw um, I saw the price of the courses and I was thinking you know like quite expensive um and so i contacted them and they said actually we um you can get a career development loan for this and um, it's something that you can do so i applied for a career development loan so it was literally about a three-week period i sort of made contact with leap found out about the loan applied for the loan got the loan went to the introduction day and booked myself onto the call so it was literally about a three-week process and i was actually on the course um, doing doing the training and my job at the time luckily the head of the department there is you know still one of my really really close friends now and I just said to her this is what I need to go and do and she was like yep yeah, signed you know signed it off and I went and did it and uh, did all the training and and, and and sort of then was still teaching because I had this salary that paid for our lives but um, at the same time, I knew that this was waiting and this was kind of bubbling away from me. So um, it was just a matter of time, really, to sort of, I suppose people say you need to get your ducks in a row. But my, you know, my, I think, I think someone said my squirrels are going crazy, you know, but I still did it. You know, my ducks weren't in a row. I had squirrels all over the place and I just, I just went for it and just, uh, you know, stopped teaching and put a sign up <laughs> got yeah. some insurance and then put some policies together and you know made sure I was practicing and, and doing lots of practice with people um and just you know set I suppose I just set the intention um to to create what I have now which is you know which is a busy um equine learning center for adults and young people yeah. So, so, so when people come along to you, um, what do they experience? What, um, what, what sort of like things do you do with them? So, uh, I always teach people about energy and being energy receptive, and um, which is really arousal. You know, so people's internal arousal systems and how they kind of send out energy. And there are some people that are really receptive to feeling energy and but not knowing you know not knowing that it's energy that they're feeling they might call it anxiety they might call it their own anxiety they might call it their own and um, their own stuff but I teach people that they can feel other people's energy quite quickly so we play some games and uh and, and do all this kind of stuff I mean with young people I'm um I often bring their parents into those energy games and um, and show their parents show young show, show the parents of these young people um, that their child is able to feel energy from a distance. And then you know if you then 
bring into uh, the mix. You know, you're taking your person, your child into a school with uh, lots of energy and this child is getting very anxious and feels like they need to escape and get out, um, which is a, a hard majority of the young people I work with choose to not go to school, you know, because they can't manage um, that high energy environment and they're labelled as being anxious and, you know, suffering from depression and all of the rest of it, which, you know, I'm not saying that they're not. They might they might not be, but what I do do is allow them to realise that actually they might not be feeling their anxiety, their ang- they might be actually feeling someone else's high energy yeah. and anxiety, so that there's there's that, um, that knowledge that actually this might not be about me. Um, and as soon as young people realize that I think they then start to take back some of their own control and Mm. some of their power and then I teach them to to interact with the horses in that same way so if somebody is um you know highly anxious the horses just won't settle with them they they, it's just impossible to settle with someone who's, who's got a high level of you know energy um horses like to be in a really calm they don't mind if someone's sad and calm. They don't mind if someone's happy and calm. But calm is 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 the main um, the main thing that people need to be. Um, you, I don't think you can be angry and calm, really. I don't. I mean, I think some people can be um, certain things, but the horses just yeah. sense it, and you know they can pick up your heart rate from a fair distance away. They can smell the adrenaline that somebody's body's releasing. They can, you know, there's all sorts of body language um, cues that the horses are constantly monitoring um, and they will not settle with an unsettled person. And that's that's really, you know, how the basis of equine learning is um, is all sort of, you know, channeled from. So, mm. yeah. OK, well, we've had a, um, a question from Jerry. So um, he says, are you doing any work with autistic individuals or those suffering from PTSD? Yeah, I do. I do work with um, autistic children and adults. And I I think um, there's so many people that are um, suffering from PTSD. And, but what I don't do is uh, manage any of that I just teach people about kind of being present and you know working with what they've got so you know I'm not um, looking at um, the trauma as such so it might be that somebody has has had trauma but what I do is I teach people about just putting one foot in front of the other and taking things step by step so bring it back to very basic basic things so yeah I mean people do go through it's like um I've just been on a course to work or to introduce myself to working with addicts. Um, and actually, I would imagine that a high percentage of the people that I have worked with could have addiction, but they don't come to me because of addiction. They will come to me for other things. And then kind of the range of what addiction is, it's not your typical, you know, when we say addicts and addictive behaviour, I mean, I, I would call myself an addict being brought up in an addictive um, family environment where my parents, and one of my parents particularly, had, uh, you know, addictive um, behaviours. So for me, it's not about the actual labelling of that particular component in someone's life. It's about the whole thing and about just literally breaking it down to where we're alive and where we are actually being you know and we're we're being in this present moment and all of the future and past stuff we need to look at you know less and focus more on where our feet are and that's just the simple way of being present and that's what equine learning is about yeah yeah very similar to how i work whereas you know we go into the past to heal the past issues so they're not affecting you in the present and we go into the future to see what your future is and what you can bring back so you're not worried in the present it's it all everything uh, um, always comes back to being in the present in the here and now mm-hmm. and and happy with who you are and what you are at this moment in time mm-hmm. because you're always yeah. perfect 
it's just other people sometimes can make you feel imperfect or your own self can make you feel imperfect but really mm. you are perfect mm. absolutely it's all okay you know those really easy phrases I mean I think um to completely simplify and uh, not to complicate stuff is 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 the answer really isn't it and to just, yeah. just deal with this, the very, very small chunks yeah yeah, yeah de definitely so um apart from the equine um therapy which sounds really good even if you even if you get just get a chance to go and spend some time with horses their energy is so lovely um what, what else do you do you do I don't really know. Uh, what else do I do? <laughs> Spend time, not, not too much really. Spend time with friends and family, um, of course. Um, you know, family's really important. Friends are really important. Um, I like to be outside as much as possible. Um, so I enjoy things like skiing and, you know, sports and any kind of nature of any sort of watching sports. So my son's a footballer. Um, and I always say the best part of the week is uh, is when he's playing football and I can completely lose myself in his football match. I would, you know, I would, if someone gave me a ticket to see the final of the World Cup or I could just watch my son play football on a Sunday afternoon, I'll be watching my son play football <laughs> on, a, on a Sunday afternoon because he's just... You know, and when my daughters were younger, they were uh, dancers and or rode horses. So any any kind of sport or competition that they were doing, um, I just, you know, love love to see them physically active and enjoying themselves and, and achieve, you know, and and achieving, you know, doing well and, you know, feeling a sense of achievement and uh, yeah. yeah. So that's that's really uh, yeah. Well, Jenny um, says. She does a great meditation class. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you do meditation as well? Yeah, yeah, we do. So on a Sunday morning, we meditate and we, we get to the yard. There's a lovely little set of us that get to the yard. And um, some some of the girls, uh, particularly Jenny and um, another, yeah, a couple of friends will come and help pay the horses um and you know kind of have that kind of connection with the horses in that way and then we you know while we're at the yard we meditate and we connect with all of it you know the horses and you know the fields all of the energy around the fields the trees as you were saying the trees the nature the grass um we tend to we can sometimes have hundreds and hundreds of birds landing down on the grass in front of us and you know, so there's 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 a lot going on. There's 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 a lot going on there in the meditation, and uh, yeah, no, it's a really good it's a really good uh, um, connecting group. The meditation yeah. Group. yeah, yeah. So, so where about um other stables that you work at, so or which are equine? Yeah, in Horton Kirby. So yeah, which is there's a lot of horses in Horton Kirby. So it's a it's a nice it's a nice place to have your horses set see quite a lot of other riders going past the yard and there's a lot of communication between the horses as other horses kind of go by and stuff so yeah that's that's where we are yeah that's brilliant so um as you know i do guided meditations and angel card reading so each week i like to ask my guest whether they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card so michelle would you like me to pull an angel card for you and those watching or do a mini guided meditation Please, would you pull an angel card for me? Of course, I can. <laughs> no problem with that one. We like we like doing the um, angel cards. And again, this isn't just for Michelle. This is for everyone watching uh, as well. And it's not predicting the future. It is for what you need to know in the present. Um, and quite often, you'll be surprised when the cards come out that they you actually know. It's actually an answer you already know. So. So, what does Michelle and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Michelle and everyone watching this need to know for the highest good at this moment in time? What does Michelle and everyone who's watching this need to know for the highest good at this moment in time? Who's watching this need to know for the highest good at this moment in time? Okay, so the card that kind of like poked itself out was choosing your path, all is possible. 
definitely so that's an absolutely um brilliant card um to to come out so to me what that that's saying is you know there's so many different paths um for you that you could possibly go down it doesn't matter which one you actually go down because it will still work out the most perfect way for you at this moment in time so so don't worry about any particular path just go with the one that you feel most connected with and it will be absolutely fine um, and will probably lead on to the other paths actually joining you. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely does. I mean, I sort of, you know, obviously the reason why I didn't do what I needed to do sooner was because I needed to be there where I was. So I don't kick myself for not doing this sooner or, you know, where I was was where I was meant to be and where I am now is definitely where I'm meant to be. And now I feel really comfortable with all of it. So no, that's, that's an amazing path. And I think anybody who's feels like they should be transitioning or haven't quite transitioned yet or about to make that decision I just feel like you know when people are ready and when it's the right time that's when when it happens so yeah yeah, yeah. No, so Michelle do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers Ooh, I think what I just said really you know I know so, I was going to say you kind of like free preempt um, my uh, the card really I do I, I do feel I feel that you know I feel like um probably that you know the pressure that people you know tend to feel or tend to put on themselves a lot of that is comes from their own internal um you know need to 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 be in a certain place or be you know making a certain amount or you know and kind of looking outwardly but I think you know look inwardly and connect all of all of what you've got going on um I think you said to me, you know, do I empower? Am I an empowerer? I think we've got our own, you know, our own tools to empower ourselves. I think by looking inwardly and just giving ourselves that space to 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 listen inwardly um, is is really when everybody gets gets what they need and you know get you know gets their answers. So yeah, yeah really, yeah. brilliant. Thank you very much. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Misha has given you will help you further on your own journey. So Misha, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? I know we've had a card, we've had an email um, and a Facebook um, running across the page, but are there any other ways that people um, can connect with you? Uh, yeah, so um, my um, company is called Kent Equine Facilitated Learning. If you was to just put that into the Google search, uh, Kent Equine Facilitated Learning, my website will come up, um, probably my Facebook page as well, um, and they can connect with me via Facebook or um, what's that other one called? Oh, Instagram. I'm so I'm so not techie, so Instagram as well. So Kent Equine Facilitated Learning on Instagram too. Um, and yeah, or email me the little horse yard at gmail.com and I will certainly get back to you. Yeah. And what I do is uh, when I put the final post on, I'll put all those links in there. So people just need to click on um, to find you. And Jerry, who asked that question, has come back to say, brilliant. Yay. Hey, so, so thank you for, uh, <laughs> for, 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 for coming back, Jerry. So um, thank you all for watching this. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call so that we can chat to each other. I can find out more about you and you can find out more about me. And also, if future life progression interests you, then I'll be teaching a three day certified future life progression practitioner course on the 15th, 16th and 17th of November at the Claridon Hotel in Blackheath. Now, the early bird offer does have to finish um, on the 7th of November. So now is the time for you to really take that next step and book yourself on the training. Um, so please do feel free to contact me for more details and I'll put the link in below. Now, next Monday, the 4th of November at 8 p.m., um, I haven't, um, I don't have a guest yet. Um, I'm still waiting for a couple of people to contact me. So if you have a story or passion to help empower women and you want to be on my show, then please do um, contact me as I'm always looking for 
um, for guests like Michelle, who who I just sent a message to, and she came along. So, um, so you could be you could be there chatting about your passion. So again, thank you very much, Michelle, for taking the time out of your very busy um, schedule to come and chat to us. And again, thank you to everyone for watching. And if you've still got any more questions or comments, please do write them in um, and we will answer them as we can. So I will see you all next week. Bye.